Good morning, everyone, and happy Father's Day. Welcome to People of Hope Church. All the songs and everything you'll need will be on the screen today. Uh, we will start with our opening song, Breathe. Desperate for you, Jesus, and I. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you, Jesus. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. And now our next song, All Who Are Thirsty. Thank you. 
Once again, good morning. My name is Matt Morsey. I am one of the volunteer worship leaders here at People of Hope Church. We are glad you are here to worship with us today on this uh, Father's Day morning and uh, uh, look forward to, uh, um, to today's worship. Um, we will begin uh, worship in, uh, in prayer, so please pray with me. Good and gracious God. We gather today with grateful hearts for all the amazing things you do in our lives. We celebrate Father's Day today as a day to say thank you for all the blessings our dads gave to us. As a dad who tries his very best every day to, do the, to be the best dad he can and to remember that you don't need a cape to be a superhero dad and you don't need to know how to play guitar to be a rock star dad. It simply starts with living out the example you set for us by sending your son to show us what true love looks like. Help all of us each and every day to be your hands and feet in the world and, con and to continue the mission you started over 2,000 years ago. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We will enter into a time of confession uh, with the confessional prayer. And uh, this, they read along with me, right? You read this along with me. God of all creation, you are great above all, you created everything. You are our breath and life. Give us ears to hear, even when it is difficult to hear or understand you. Forgive us for not listening to ourselves, to those around us, and most importantly, to you. Help us to forgive the ones we feel wronged by. Move us to be agents of change, unsatisfied with an unjust world. Remind us of your love again and again. Ignite us to be your loving and faithful presence in the world, for you are the ultimate giver of all good things. Amen. Remember, it doesn't matter where you're at on your faith journey, you will make mistakes along that, along that path, but always know that you are loved and you are forgiven. The reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 23 through 37. After they were released... When they went to their friends and, and reported that the chief priests and elders, what the chief priests and elders had said to them, when they heard it, they raised their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in them, it is you who said by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant. Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples imagine vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers have gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. For in this city, in fact, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look at their hearts and grant your servants to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. 
With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands and houses said, sold them and, and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means the son of, encur- son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now it's time for the young missionaries, missionaries' message. Uh, good morning. It's great to see you here uh, this morning on our Facebook Live worship. Sorry we couldn't meet together in person for worship this morning. We were too afraid that someone might get accidentally electrocuted in the rain that was supposed to happen. So um, we decided to err on the side of safety. So who would have thought that? So uh, again, thank you for joining us for worship uh, this morning. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give Gumdrop uh, another break this week. Uh, Gumdrop, as you've learned over the past uh, few months, really almost a year now, uh, is a very, very old man. And Gumdrop actually has 837 children. I know that's kind of mind-boggling, but things work a little different for wizards than they do for for you and I. So he's going to celebrate and take a break today uh, and and try to celebrate with all 837 of his children. Um, So say a a prayer for Gumdrop today as he celebrates Father's Day. Um, Like I've said during the past few weeks, Uh, We're taking some intentional time during these young missionaries' messages uh, during the summer summer months to pray for different people um, in our church, different segments of our church population. Um, Just as uh, prayer is important to the first uh, church community, the community that's in the book of Acts. If you remember the first week that we we talked about Acts, we prayed for our LGBTQIA plus uh, community here at People of Hope. And last week we prayed for those, the members of our community or the sub-community at People of Hope that tend to uh, creation. We prayed for those who tend our garden and who work on the trails and and, uh, for Mary Hare who creates our beautiful flower gardens. So this week we're going to pray for another population here at the church and it's it's a population of of people um, that, that really strive to do their best in their daily life. Uh, they try to manage uh, the demands of careers, but also to manage the, manage the demands of, of being uh, great role models at home, um, faithful partners uh, to uh, their spouses, who try to, to lead in the community and share God's love with, with the entire community. Uh, so today we're going to pray a special prayer of thanksgiving for the fathers that are present here at People of Hope those fathers who were fathers to members of our community here at People of Hope, and for those who who have always wanted to be fathers but have not yet had that opportunity. And as I was thinking about saying um, a prayer for fathers uh, today, it made me think of my own father, who, um, who you you know, uh, our, our relationship was a little different, but uh, I want to especially thank... Um, Thank God for, for the blessing of, of Ron Doring today, uh, my dad, who I'm thinking about, who really taught me uh, what it meant to be a, a hard worker uh, and, and, and tr- to try to do the best that, that uh, I can do in anything that I try to do. So uh, my dad's no longer with us, so uh, today I thank God that uh, I'll be reunited with him someday. So I invite you to say a prayer of thanksgiving for your fathers today. So let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for this day, this special day, when we remember and celebrate the fathers in our life. God, continue to bless them in all they do as they work, as they play, as they laugh, as they cry. Continue to be with them always. We thank you for them. 
It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to continue with the sharing of the peace. So God makes peace within us. Let us claim it. God makes peace between us. Let us share it. The peace of God is here to stay. Thanks be to God. I invite you to take a moment to share God's love and peace with one another in our Facebook chat. I'm on mute. Am I unmuted now? You missed my so exciting churchtopia, so I'm going to do it again. Today we're going to talk about churchtopia. Woo! Uh, we're going to talk about the last part of the fourth chapter of the book of Acts. This depiction that you heard Matt so eloquently read, this, this depiction of this early church community where everybody put everything together and held everything in common. If someone was broke, the church gave them money. If someone needed food, the church gave them food to, to eat. If, the, if someone needed a shirt, the church gave the person a shirt. We hear about this, this community that just has this outpouring of spirit, right? And, and this fourth chapter of Acts has been held up for many, many years as kind of the ideal of what church should be. And I come to you this morning saying, it is indeed the ideal but it's the ideal that none of us ever live up to. I know, sobering news, right? I was all excited, and now I'm like, uh, uh, Danny depressing, right? But no, I mean, this is an idealized version of what church should be, right? This excitement of these early church believers to so moved by, by the Holy Spirit, so em impassionate and inflamed by the spirit to to cast everything aside and say that community with jesus community blessed by the spirit is the most important thing in the world a community where all personal desires and all personal personal dreams and all personal wants were cast aside for the sake of the community and I stand in front of you saying that this is ideal, like this is an idealized version of what Christian community is, and this is impossible for us to live up to today. Our world is really, really complex. Each and every one of us, each and every day, are pulled in a million different directions. We're asked to excel at our, our places of work. We're asked to, to be the best friends and, and spouses that we can possibly be. We're asked to volunteer our time in the, in the larger community to make the larger community better. We're asked to volunteer at church to make this community better and stronger. We're asked to learn about um, different injustices in the world and speak to those injustices. We're asked to, to be the best chefs in the world so we can cook marvelous food for our family we're we're asked to be the best t-ball or baseball or softball coach on the face of the earth so our children never experience the disappointment of loss we're asked and asked and asked and asked and we get spread really really thin now this happens to us individually but this also happens to to us as a community of faith right we're supposed to be this this place where where we excel at christian education where where anybody can come here and learn anything that they possibly want to about God, while at the same time we're supposed to be this awesome worship center, right, where, where everyone go, experiences every worship service and it's just life-changing and a mountaintop experience, while at the same time we're also asked to be a social service agency, to be mobilized to, to address any societal need that happens at any given time. And by the way, we're also supposed to do all this stuff be, using the best business management practices that anyone can possibly have, right? We're asked to do all these things, and, and these expectations can become overwhelming. 
right? And, and, and we can fall in this trap of trying to meet all these expectations all the time and lose focus on what Christian community really should be about. And that is bathing in the Spirit of God. Of being compelled to come together to love one another and encourage one another. To be a place of, of welcome, of open arms. To be a place that's non-judgmental. A place of gathering. A place of prayer. A place of acceptance. And if we boil down this, this second half of the book of, uh, chapter of the book of Acts, that's really what this community is, right? Uh, we can talk about the, the selling of possessions and holding common purse or whatever, but this depiction is really about this community that is so compelled by the love they experience through Jesus Christ. They are brought together to be with one another, to celebrate with one another, and to do the work of God with one another. You know, I'm a church geek, so I read church books all the time, and, and there's this one book that I've read numerous times that kind of outlines what marks a healthy congregation in the 20th century, so it's an older book, but I think these marks hold true to the 21st century as well. And, it, and he uses, the author of this book, uses this last chapter of the book of Acts as a kickoff point, but then he kind of contemporizes it to what marks a healthy congregation for our time now. And this author says, first, healthy congregations have a sense of committed purpose. They have a generosity of spirit and resources. Congregation desires to dig deeply into scripture, to participate regularly with one another in worship. Has intentional and ongoing faith formations for all ages. Has an open door and a hearty welcome. And a healthy congregation has a spirit of mission and purpose. Over the course of the past six to eight months, really 12 months, People of Hope has engaged in a strategic planning process, saying, what, what, are, what are we going to look like, and how are we going to, to be a place uh, that, that preaches gos God's gospel in the world after we resume from the pandemic? And we've come up with different initiatives, some three key areas, you know, what does it look like to welcome people and make people feel welcome in the larger community of Rochester? What does it look like to build intentional relationships within our community of faith? Relationships that, that have suffered during this time of separation. And what does it mean to, to offer inspiring worship? These things are all marks of a healthy congregation. So the question I think that we need to ask ourselves is how healthy are we as a congregation and what's my part to increase the health of people of hope? Now we have an amazing congregation. We do amazing things. I hope that we, we are a place of welcome. I hope that we are a place that reaches out and, and makes people welcome in the community. I hope that, that relationships here that are developed and formed here are lifelong relationships, the relationships that we share with one another. But we can always be healthier. We can always strive to do better, to be a place of bolder proclamation. So today, I stand in front of you willing to make that commitment. I'm all in. I'm going to do everything that I can to, to address these, these areas of growth, this sense of committed purpose, this generosity and spirit of resources, this des desire to dig deeply into scripture, to participate regularly in worship, to intentional and ongoing faith formation, to have an open door and a hearty welcome, to be a spirit of mission and purpose, both to those outside of our community of faith, those with inside our community of faith, and those who experience our community of faith during worship. I'm all in. I am committed. 
today, I ask you to make that commitment as well. It's scary to commit. I understand that. Like, I don't even want to commit to what I'm going to eat for lunch in an hour from now. It's scary. But you know what? The book of Acts tells us that if a group of impassioned and spirit-filled people make that commitment together, amazing things transpire. God becomes known. The Spirit is let loose. An amazing transformation happens. Just think about that first Christian community that Matt read about this morning. If they didn't commit to God, to this message of love and transformation, and if they didn't commit to, to one another, people of hope wouldn't be here today. So siblings in Christ, today I make a commitment to you and to God to re-energize, to refocus, to be more intentional about the things that I've talked about today. And I invite you to do the same. God's presence presence is alive and well here at People of Hope. Let us unleash it into the world. Let us continue to make that presence known in the relationships that we have with one another. And let that presence inform the way that we worship and thank God each and every week. I invite you to be a part of this journey. Sometimes it's going to be scary. Sometimes it's going to be rough. But I promise you, if you commit, amazing things will happen. And how can I promise that to you this morning? Because amazing things happen when we are faithful to God and when we share God's love with the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to join in singing our song, I Can Only Imagine.
We now uh, profess our uh, statement of faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, Now is the time uh, where we take the offering. There are multiple ways to give uh, to people at Hope. There's ways via text. You can uh, uh, give online uh, for, your, for your financial contributions. We're also looking for talents uh, for not only set up for in-person worship, but as we're going to be ramping up for in-person indoor worship, we are uh, needing to rebuild that. So please uh, keep those things in mind. And if you are interested in helping with those things, reach out to the church office and we will... Uh, get you directed to the right place. Um, And prayers to the people. And that's not me. We continue with the prayers of the people. So if you're watching live and you have yet to uh, include your prayer request, feel free to chat, type that into the chat right now. Um, But that being said, let us pray together. I'll end every prayer petition with Lord in your mercy. And I invite you to respond here our prayer audibly. You can also hit one of those emojis here on Facebook. So let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, I thank you for this day of grace. I thank you for the opportunity and the technology to bring us together uh, to to worship and, and praise you. God, we lift our prayers to you now. Gracious God, continue to stir in us the spirit of hospitality so we can continue the work of welcoming and sharing your love with all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Most holy and gracious God, be with all who are recovering from surgery or injury. Provide comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, as Uh, Our nation celebrated Juneteenth as a uh, federal holiday for the first time yesterday. We ask that you continue to use us uh, to break down systems of oppression uh, in our country and throughout the world. Uh, Grant us bold witness to proclaim your love for all people and your freedom for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, today I thank you for for uh, a successful half marathon for my brother Dave Temple. He's been working hard. Uh, Thank you for giving him the perseverance to see it through and run a great race yesterday in Duluth. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayers. Gracious God, today we lift up a, a, a member missionary family as they continue uh, to deal uh, with a cancer diagnosis for a member of their family. Uh, continue uh, to use us to offer encouragement and support. Uh, continue to guide uh, the hands of all medical professionals providing care. And continue to bless um, this person as they deal with this new diagnosis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, today uh, I think of the homeless community here in Rochester. Uh, continue to be with them and provide them with warm food, warm shelter, and warm clothing. And gracious God, especially as it gets really warm out, uh, provide for them the opportunities to find shelter so they can beat the heat. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we lift our silent prayers to you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We are now going to continue today's worship service with our communion liturgy. So if you need to grab some communion elements to participate in the meal, I invite you to do so. Also, when we get to the point of sharing the meal, if you find yourself worshiping alone, today and you, you, see, you see a friend who's watching the live stream with us, go ahead and give that friend a call and share the meal with one another. So we continue. Your parts will appear on the screen uh, when you're invited to speak. People of God, people of life, we gather as a holy communion for a meal that has been shared countless times in countless places and in countless ways. The first time this meal was shared, Jesus gathered around a table with a ragged collection of people. Outcasts, betrayers, the power hungry, the fra fragile, the lonely, the lost. The first time the meal was celebrated, Jesus promised that it was for all time, that whenever the bread was broken and the wine was poured, wherever the story was told around a table, he would be there. Today we remember the story as it's been told a thousand times over. We eat the bread and we drink the wine and we affirm that we all belong at this table and that Jesus is here. So if we come to this table angry, let this bread and wine be our peace. If we come to the table betrayed, let this bread and wine be our grace. If we come to the table divided, let this bread and wine be our wholeness. If we come to the table in despair, let this bread and wine be our life. For this is a holy table with food to fill the hungry world and wine to quench thirsty hearts. Thanks be to God. When Jesus ate with friends, he took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he passed it to his friends, saying, Drink. This cup poured out for you and for all people is the promise of God. Whenever you drink it, remember me. We remember Jesus' death and resurrection, our hope and our life. We break the bread and we share the one cup. Thanks be to God. I invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I invite you to participate in this meal in your home.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and in his peace. Amen. I have a smattering of community announcements today, so buckle in, I guess. Uh, first, just a reminder uh, that my family uh, and I will not be in Rochester this week. We're actually going on a family vacation uh, to visit Tucker's godmother in Maine, uh, but also to do some other Maine-y kind of things. Uh, so uh, I'll be gone from Monday through um, tomorrow until next Saturday. If you have a pastoral need, simply call the church office. Uh, Pastor Dave Berg from Glory Day Lutheran Church here in Rochester will kind of serve as our pastor on call. Uh, so uh, call the church office. We'll hook you up with Dave if you have a need. Um, and then he'll inform you about what's going on and, and we'll make sure that you're taken care of. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity for us to get away uh, when I'm not laying as an invalid in my living room, really. So uh, thank you for that. I also just want to give you a, a, a quick update. You could probably tell from this morning, I am feeling so much better and excited to, to get back uh, uh, full-time uh, here at People of Hope. That full-time kind of ministry is going to resume the week after vacation. So I'll be around. So if you need something, uh, just holler and let me know. I think there's still space uh, uh, for our, our church-wide camp out, so if you're interested in participating in that, uh, there's information in this past week's e-news about how to make reservations at, at, um, at Harvest Farm, so uh, I invite you to, to, to participate in that way. Your MLT is, is still working through this strategic plan, so you'll be learning more about that uh, in the next coming weeks. Uh, we've identi identified some folks to work on some subgroup uh, teams to help flush out that strategic plan uh, as well. So uh, look for exciting news about that. Um, uh, the MLT also is, is, is working with our, our, our uh, re-coming together group, for lack of a better word. I don't know what to, that, that means, to, to uh, create safe practices for when we resume in-person worship. Hopefully those plans will get flushed out here relatively quickly. So if inclement weather, like this morning, happens again, we can invite people into our church building uh, to worship. We're going to go kit and caboodle uh, beginning at this, uh, uh, of September. So we're looking for we're going to be looking at learning time, all that kind of stuff, um, kind of when we would regularly kick off things in September. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, the month of July, uh, I'm going to lead some regroup regrouping and re-welcoming folks back kind of events. So look for information in the coming weeks about an adult-only movie night that I'm going to host here at People of Hope. Look for information about a bonfire activity that I'm going to host for all the kids at People of Hope. Look for a book study that I'm going to start initiating here in July here at People of Hope. We're resuming uh, Theo Thursdays on uh, Thursday, July 8th at noon, so come be a part of that Bible study and look for more information about ways that we want to welcome you back uh, in, uh, in person here at People of Hope. Uh, that all being said, again, thank you so much for your faithfulness during this, this time of pandemic, this time of physical distancing. I can't tell you how excited I am uh, about the opportunity to welcome you back here in person. It's going to be great. Uh, so I, uh, I encourage you to afford yourself of those opportunities. There, uh, there continues to be other ways that you can serve uh, uh, God through various ministries here at People of Hope. We'll have the Dorothy Day meal that first uh, Saturday in July. So if you're interested in, in helping provide foodstuffs uh, for the Dorothy Day house, you can contact Dave uh, Young. He'll get you the, all that information. We continue to seek volunteers for the open table food ministry. Um, so come do that. Um, uh, we always could use help in the garden in that ministry. So come do that. Uh, our, so there's a, a variety of things happening still. And we're just going to keep ramping and ramping it up. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So again, thank you for making worship part of, the, of your day this morning. I invite you to join in singing our final song.
just one more announcement that I forgot, and I can't believe that I forgot it. I am also going to start a new ministry called Bike and Bible here at People of Hope. I know that if you've been watching Facebook, I'm a biking fiend, um, but we are going, I'm going to start holding community bike rides for our community of faith. We're going to bike for a short distance, stop, have a brief Bible study, and then we're going to continue our bike ride. These bike rides aren't going to be the 20 milers that you see me posting on Facebook. will probably be less than five miles a pop. So uh, if you're interested in that ministry, um, look for more information soon. It's going to be awesome. Okay, Matt. Receive the final blessing. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warmly on your face. And may the rain, oh, do we need rain, fall gently on your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God, we will.